parce que c'était un, un débat très vif et très intéressant. Euh, il a posé des questions euh, qui sont vraiment importantes. Comment l'Europe perçoit la Turquie Quelle est l'identité Quelle est la, euh, la volonté des Turcs de rester euh, dans la région ou de devenir des Européens euh, convaincus Je crois que toutes les problématiques qui sont liées à l'évolution de la de l'État turc et de la société turque vers des valeurs européennes a été discuté largement. One of the main arguments against Turkish membership, as you might know, is uh, it's being too big, too poor, and too Muslim. So it says for itself that you know, uh, being a Muslim country, uh, that's part of this whole story. I don't think being a Muslim society is an obstacle for Turkey's membership, and it shouldn't be. There, are, of course, Islam as and being a Muslim society or having Asiatic roots, having a uh, Um, roots from Central Asia um, all have been arguments against Turkish membership in the European um, circles, but speaking about identity itself, not image or perceptions, speaking about identity itself, I don't believe that uh, this shall be the issue. Uh, when we say Turkey's European identity, uh, from, from a uh, critical discourse analysis, uh, Turkey's European identity sounds like Turkey is the bad guy and the European identity is the good guy. We shouldn't fall into that trap. I feel like Turkey right now is like a Ahmatova poem. You look at what's going on, you realize that, you know, these things happened in Europe after the Second World War. You look at Spain, for example, where you know, up to the 1970s, women were not allowed to buy property or travel without the consent of their husbands. Or you look at Ireland. I mean, I watched millions of films and read millions of books on Ireland. And, you know, you see what women went through up to the 80s in Ireland. And now I'm looking at my country and the way things are changing there. And you know, the whole process is very European indeed. It's not, a, in my opinion, a Turkish thing or a Muslim thing or a Middle Eastern thing. In fact, the whole process of change is very European. Has Turkey improved? Sure. Has Turkish media freedoms have improved? Definitely, undoubtedly. But it's not my job to talk about how much they have improved. In fact, it's my job as a journalist to talk about what's missing. You know, in many ways, our media climate um, uh, has significantly improved with uh, changes in, uh, in laws that restrict freedom of expression. Is it where I would like it to be? No, very far from it. Why and how do I know that? Well, I do know that because there's 40-something journalists still in jail that have not done anything except you know, writing. If it weren't for the Turkish media, the European topic wouldn't have been Uh, within the scope uh, or on the radar of uh, the Turkish uh, society. So what do we do if uh, we don't have the media? We call the media the fourth um, power in the democratic uh, society. We just had a very lively debate, a very engaging, open, critical debate about the relationship between Turkey and the EU and specifically the role that culture, expression and media play in this. And we see actually two things. The topic of culture, expressions, the arts, media, it touches people very close to their hearts. It deals with identity, it deals with expression, it deals with conviction, with tradition, with diversity. And uh, on the other hand, of course, free, independent media and an open uh, cultural landscape are fundamental pillars of democracies, of open societies. And so there is a broader context and the personal aspect that we touched upon. And uh, we came to the conclusion that we need harder work to allow for more open debates like this, to ensure that there is true media pluralism, independent ownership and freedom of expression in Turkey.